In this video, we're going to talk about the elasticity of substitution and the cross elasticity of factor demand. The elasticity of substitution is measured as the ratio of the percent change in the capital to employment ratio divided by the percent change in the ratio of factor prices. In this case, the wage rate to the price of capital. We're going to consider the case of perfect substitutes. Perfect substitutes are said to occur when we have linear downward sloping isoquants. In this case, there's a constant rate at which you're able to substitute capital for labor. A firm in this particular example could produce the same amount of output with 10 units of capital, with 14 units of labor, or any linear combination in between those. What this amounts to in practice is that firms are going to end up using only one or the other. If capital is relatively expensive, the firm will end up minimizing costs by using only labor. If labor is relatively more expensive, then the firm is going to minimize its cost by using only capital. There are some examples where we see these types of production functions. For example, have you ever picked up a bottle of soda and seen on the ingredients that it will contain either sugar or high fructose corn syrup? What happens is that firms will use high fructose corn syrup or sugar depending on the relative prices of those two inputs at the time when they're producing it. And they're essentially perfect substitutes because they have the same sweetening properties and taste tests suggest that people can't tell the difference. So when we have perfect substitutes, the elasticity of substitution is said to be infinite because they're perfectly substitutable for each other. At the other extreme, we have the possibility of perfect complements. Perfect complements have right angle isoquants. This is also referred to as a fixed proportions production function. What occurs in this case is that firms must have a fixed ratio of capital to labor. So, and that's represented by the vertex of this, um, of this isoquant here. If you have more labor, but you don't have additional tools to work with, if you have more tools, but you don't have additional workers to use those, you're not able to produce more output. And as this diagram suggests, the least cost combination of inputs, no matter what relative factor prices are, will occur at this corner, at the vertex. So the two ISO cost curves there have quite different slopes, but we see the lowest level of cost still occurs right at that, that point. And this, in this case, the elasticity of substitution is zero. There's no substitution that takes place. What happens is the elasticity of substitution is, roughly speaking, a measure of the curvature of an isoquant. In the case where there's no curvature and it's perfectly linear, we have an infinitely elastic substitution. In the case where we have a right angle isoquant, we end up with an elasticity of substitution of zero and there's no substitution possible between the inputs. Firms will always use them in the same ratio. For example, if you have someone who will only consume peanut butter and jelly with fixed proportions of that, having more peanut butter but no more jelly or more jelly without any more peanut butter will not allow you to produce more sandwiches. You're always going to produce it in the, the same constant ratio. Another measure that's used to represent the relationship between two different inputs is a cross elasticity of factor demand. And that's equal to the percent change in the quantity of resource I to the percent change in the price of resource J. So it's a measure of the amount by which a quantity of one input, input I, changes in response to a change in the price of input J. This will be greater than zero if the substitution effect is larger than the scale effect, and when that occurs, we say the two inputs are substitutes, as we've talked about before. It'll be less than zero if the substitution effect is less than the scale effect, in which case the two inputs will be complements.